Hello online community. Thank you for joining us for our Saturday morning Bible study. We are very excited for this lesson today. Yes, we are. And it's going to be uh, a topic on forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, just to kind of give a quick overview on forgiveness and kind of what we've been dealing with here lately here at the church. That is so important. I know this is like we've been talking about deliverance. Everybody's asking questions about deliverance. And that is one of the biggest roadblocks, I will have to say, that causes individuals not to get deliverance is unforgiveness. That's right. um, also, it says in the word that we are to forgive our brothers and sisters because Christ has forgiven us. And if we do not forgive them, then God cannot forgive us. And so, guys, it is like so important. Forgiveness is one of the hardest things that we deal with in a Christian walk. I know it's hard for everybody because things have been done to us. Things have been said to us. People have treated us certain ways. And it's really hard to forgive certain people for things that they've done to us. You know, if we uh, have to forgive somebody, it doesn't mean they treat, they've been treating us good. And so today we're going to be talking about that and how to properly go about forgiving individuals yeah. because there's a lot of information out there that people try to put on us and try to tell us how we should forgive and how we have to do this and how we have to do that. And if we don't take these certain steps, then we never will truly uh, have a forgiving heart. And uh, therefore, then, then God cannot forgive you unless you forgive in this certain way. And so we're going to be talking about that today. And hopefully this guy is, this will help you guys understand more of what true forgiveness is all about and why we truly need to forgive. Yes, and so today's topic, um, it's been, we've actually made a video on this before, we've written some things out, yeah. and some people love it, some people not so much. But today, our topic is forgive and forget is a lie from the enemy and we yes. are going to walk through and tell you exactly why forgive and forget is a lie from the enemy yes it is yes. you know so uh you know i'm sure that we've all heard that before that's a pretty common terminology you know well you just need to forgive and forget we've all heard that and people say man i want to forgive that individual but i cannot forget what he or she did to me and so i guess I'm not truly have a forgiving heart. I don't truly forgive them because I cannot forget what happened to me. Yeah, that phrase will keep you bound in shackles of unforgiveness. It will make you believe that if you haven't forgotten the wrongdoing done for, to you, that you haven't truly forgiven them. And honestly, forgetting a action that was done to you, especially a traumatic action, yeah. guys, is an unrealistic human expectation. It is not humanly possible to forgive something that was done to you terribly. And our brains are just not created that way. And God did not intend to create our brains that way. You know, people will say, especially, well, you just need to forget that. And that's really hard, especially if you've gone through some long-term trauma. But what you can do is forgive and give it to Jesus and lay it down at the foot of the cross. Yeah, that's what the really important thing is because if we had the ability, guys, honestly, let's think about this for two seconds. If we had the ability to forgive somebody, which we do have the ability to do that, and then forget, where we could just literally wipe our minds clean of the whole situation, then where would God be coming in to heal our hearts, to be there with us during those times? Uh, we would give all credit to ourselves. Mm -hmm. It would be all about us and what we've done to ourselves and how we healed ourselves and, and me, 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 I, 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 you know, and people say, well, how did you get over that? Well, I just did because I'm, I'm not, I forgot. because I forgot, you know, and then you need to do the same, you know, as humans, we all can do that. Yeah, but well, actually, no, that is ab absolutely humanly impossible to forget. And like she said, something, especially something traumatic, yeah. even not so traumatic, it's impossible to forget but it's not impossible to forgive. Yeah, and that's the beautiful thing about Jesus is he can take a situation that hurt you so terribly in this world and you can lay it down at the foot of the cross and he can mend your heart and minister to you through the Holy Spirit and allow you to be able to have a testimony when people say, well, how did you forgive that person for doing something so terrible to you? You can say, Jesus helped me and God is a God that he gets glory. And Absolutely. so through that, 
you will be able to give Jesus all the glory for mending and healing your heart. Because honestly, you guys, we should not minimize the feelings that we have. Our feelings are validated and they have to be felt in order for us to get through them. They're not a place where we live. There is no. a season for everything. However, we cannot allow these feelings to keep us trapped in unforgiveness. We can't allow the trauma to have a stronghold in our life. No, we cannot. You know, and the thing is, is that we can look at a passage here and it's in Matthew. It's uh, chapter 18 verses 21 through 22. And it's where Peter is talking to Jesus. And I'll go ahead and read it real quick for y'all. And it says, then Peter came to him, who is Jesus, and said, Lord, how oft shall I shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times Jesus saith unto him I say not unto thee until seven times but until seventy times seven and so we look at that verse and we're like oh my gosh so that literally means that people can just go around sinning against me wreaking havoc in my life causing me all this pain and despair and just keep on just treating me like a doormat and I have to take it. I have to just let people walk all over me because that's the Christian thing to do. And a lot of times, guys, growing up in church, that's what we were taught to do. Well, as a Christian, you need to forgive and forget. And, and you know, Jesus told Peter that we have to forgive somebody 490 times. And he's not really saying 490 times. He's literally saying you have to forgive them a million times and keep doing it over and over and over again. And so, and it's all about that person. It's all about that person. It's not about that person at all, actually. It's about you and your heart and not allowing unforgiveness to settle into your heart and settle into your mind. Because it's really, guys, forgiveness is more of a heart thing than it is a mind thing. See, we can change our hearts. Our minds are just kind of the way they are, and we won't forget it, but our hearts can heal from it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's there's two different ways that we can look at this verse. You know, uh, there's a way that most people look at it. You know, Peter's brother, you know, it could be his actual biological brother because he did, you know, he was one of the other 12 disciples. And, you know, his brother, he just keeps sinning against him over and over. And he keeps asking Jesus, oh, how many times am I obligated to forgive him before I don't have to anymore? Because I'm getting tired of it. We argue, we bicker, and he just keeps he keeps coming against me, he keeps sinning against me. And I'm getting really tired of it, Jesus. And uh, Jesus says, you're going to you're going to keep on forgiving him. And then there's another way, which I'll let well, her explain. I will say, yeah. though, if you are keeping yourself in a toxic situation by choice, then you are morally obligated to keep forgiving and yes. keep forgiving. It's not you shouldn't keep yourself in a toxic situation, but if by choice you are allowing people to reoffend, 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 then yes, you would be obligated to continue in forgiveness. Forgiveness. For forgiveness. Excuse there we go. me. I got to get it out, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> forgiveness. <laughs> Yeah, you will have to continue in forgiveness. Um, you know, and guys, the, and we're going to talk about it a little bit more as we move down because everybody's like, I know a lot of you guys are thinking right now, well, you don't know what happened to me. You don't know what that person did to me. How can I forgive that person? They hurt me. They ruined my life. They, they, they took away, you know, and, and in some instances, they took away my childhood. How am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? Well, we're going to talk about that as yes. we move down. Because I know that's some questions that is running through your guys' head because it's a very hard subject. Yes, it is a hard subject. Yes. So the I'm next you, way yes. we could look at this passage is that Jesus had been talking to his disciples about forgiveness and how we should go about forgiving other people. And Peter, although he felt as if he had forgiven someone in his heart, the thoughts kept coming back to him about what that person had done. And... Even though Peter felt like he had truly forgiven, he still had memory of what he was happening to him, and that thought had still lingered. And Peter, dealing with the fact that the memory was not leaving him, and his mind kept bringing it back up. So it's our job to continue to forgive, even though our mind keeps trying to bring it back up. And uh, once we truly have given things to Jesus, the feelings that are connected to that memory will also lessen as we go on in our journey with forgiveness. 
it's as Justin said, it's not a mind issue, it's a heart issue. And we have to remind ourselves that even though the thoughts might come back, we have forgiven that individual and we have given it all to Jesus. And just because we remember doesn't mean that we haven't forgiven. It's just our minds and how we work. And honestly, it's a way for Satan to just keep trying to come at you. If you yeah. give him an avenue to try to come at you, he will use that. Yeah. And so um, yeah, he will try to play on your mind and make you think that you didn't forgive. Oh, yeah. So what we believe Jesus is saying that you keep forgiving them. It doesn't mean that he actually keeps sinning against you over and over. It simply means that the thought of what he did to you will continue to come back. And it's a cognitive decision to lay it down at the foot of the cross and not continually hold it against that person. It's our job to keep on forgiving that sin because if we don't, it can fester. Yeah, you know, guys, even if someone said before that we have forgiven someone, um, they can do something to you and it will come back into your minds. And so we cannot let the enemy sit down mm -hmm. and say, you didn't forget that. It's still coming back up. It's still kind of bothering you. You didn't really forgive them. That's a lie. That's a lie. Because once you forgive, then the Lord has a chance to work on you. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it's all about. That's how he gets the glory. That's how the Lord gets the glory for your breakthrough and for the bondage of that unforgiveness to come off of you. And so whenever it's fresh, when the wounds open, you got to allow the Lord to have some healing time with you. Spend some time. The Lord has spent a little bit of time with it. It's not a It's not a go somewhere and he go, puts a little medicine on it and it heals right up. And it's, it's done and over and it's never going to ever bother you again. Yeah, sometimes there's scars on your heart. You know, at the beginning, the scar is really, really tender. And when you touch it... Well, it's, it's not a scar. Yeah. It's actually, it's split open. Yeah. I mean, it, it's actually a gash and it's open and it turns into a scab and then it turns into a scar, and then it will turn into, then it comes back, and then it eventually it's still tender, it's soft, it's, you know, sometimes when people push on it and people say things about it or it reoccurs back into our minds, it still hurts a little bit, but we just keep reminding ourselves, I forgive that person. I forgive them for what they did, and the Lord is doing a new thing in me. And through that forgiveness, I'm growing closer to Christ. My relationships with other people are growing around me. There's all, it's all beneficial. Yeah. Having unforgiveness in your heart is all detrimental. Yeah, it actually puts a barrier between you and Jesus. Yeah. And it hardens our hearts and keeps a, a wall between us and Christ. Absolutely. But, you know, even though you remember forgiving, even though the memory keeps popping up, is what forgiveness is all about. And that's what Jesus has called us to do. So no matter how many times that thought may rise up in your mind, we forgive them again. And we forgive them so that we are able to be forgiven. In Matthew yes. 6 verse 14, it says, uh, actually, Jesus says, For if ye forgive man, men of their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men of their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's super important, guys, because for us to... Now, yes, we have to accept Christ. We have to accept the work on the cross, what he did for us. Um, you know, the only way to heaven is through his son, Jesus. But also, though, guys, that we have to live a repentant lifestyle. That's one of the commandments that Jesus gave us while he was here on this earth. He said that we must repent for our sins. But if, we're, if we are repenting for our sins, and yet we hold unforgiveness in our hearts, then we aren't even forgiven of those sins. And it says in the Word that we will pile up transgressions against ourselves so that in the end time, it, we are literally heaping damnation upon ourselves through unforgiveness. And we can sit here and say, oh, Lord, forgive me. And the Lord's like, well, now, why should I forgive you of your transgressions that you have committed against me when you won't even forgive your brother or your sister in Christ down the road? Because they might have said something you didn't like or maybe even bigger. But the thing is, is that what we have done to Christ is exponential compared to what man has done to us. What man has done to us is minute. So, guys, we have he died for us. And for a long time, a lot of us just lived in blatant rebellion. We sinned against him purposefully. We knew the truth, and yet we chose not to walk it out and not to walk in faith and not to even accept the work on the cross. And 
we go about and we don't tell others about the word, every single day we sin against him. Every single day. And, and he, yet he still forgives us. But yet we don't want to forgive somebody because they sinned against us one time in our lives. And so it's really important, guys, to kind of put things in perspective on that. Yeah. Um, and also, long-standing unforgiveness is detrimental to our physical, psychological, and spiritual health. Absolutely. Unforgiveness is. is unfruitful in the eyes of the Lord. And it keeps you bound in shackles by the wrongdoer and by the enemy himself. If you give that to the enemy, he will keep going at you and keep going at you. And as valid as our feelings might be towards the people that hurt us, we must lay that hurt down at the foot of the cross. Forgiveness is allowing the Lord and Savior who died for us to break the unseemingly impossible and unbreakable chains of the burden of unforgiveness and shame. Forgiving an action done to you is not the same as accepting or forgetting the action done to you. We have to understand that just because you forgive is not condoning. And honestly, yeah. you guys, it is up to your offender to ask for forgiveness from the Lord. Yeah. Just because you forgive them does not give them an out with Jesus. Like they're going to have to ask for that and they're going to have to repent for that themselves. It is releasing you from the shame and the sin that is attached to unforgiveness. Well, and the and the bondage that they put you in and the shame that they put on you uh, possibly through that sin. Yes. And guys, and I want to add this too real quick that, you know, also we are taught that, well, now if somebody, if somebody offends us, somebody sins against us, they do something terrible to us and five years down the road, they all of a sudden get a conscience and they come up to you and they apologize to you. Well, a lot of us grew up and we were told that if they apologize to you, you forgive them and you, and you are forced to mend that relationship back together. You're forced to, to do it, whether you want to or not, because if you don't, then you're holding unforgiveness to that individual and that is unacceptable. So if a person comes up to you and says, I'm sorry for what I did to you, I apologize. We were told that you have to mend that relationship. I'm here to tell you that you don't. That is not biblical. That does not, nowhere in the Bible does it tell you that you have to mend a relationship yeah, with somebody. Yeah, you're not obligated. If because, you want to, you can. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. If you guys want to, if that's something that you guys choose within your hearts or if that's a conviction that you guys want to follow, then by all means, yeah. do so. I am not telling you that you cannot. But what I am telling you is that you're not forced into doing it. Because guess what, guys? I can come up to somebody and say, hey, hey, buddy, I I'm sorry for what I did the other day. You know, forgive me. Because... I heard that, that I'm afraid that might get out. Somebody might, somebody might have my, he might start telling other people what I did. And so I gotta, I gotta cover my tracks. And so I gotta say, Hey buddy, you know, Hey, I'm sorry for what I did the other day. You know, let's just kind of keep that between ourselves. Let's not, let's not let this go any further. I apologize. My intentions were wrong. And the thing is that people that do stuff like that, they're going to hurt you again and they're going to hurt you again. And they're going to keep on apologizing and you're, they're going to keep you trapped in that toxic relationship. They're going to keep you trapped in that spirit of unforgiveness because every time you forgive them, you're like, I forgave them. And then they do something else to you. Then you have to forgive them again. And then you have to forgive them again. And the thing is, is that whenever we actually step back and take a look at it, we realize that if we just separate ourselves from this toxic relationship, from these toxic individuals, then we can start healing. But as long as this person keeps staying around us and they keep sinning against us and they keep hurting us, then we need to, we need to realize we need to identify it and we need to separate ourselves from those individuals because they're going to keep doing it over and over again. And it, even if it, so if you don't feel like that's the case and you feel like that their intentions are right, but yet you still don't want to have a relationship with them, that's fine. Paul says that we are to forgive but we don't have to go back into that situation. We don't have to put ourselves back into a situation to where we're going to keep getting hurt over and over and over again. Yeah. That's not healthy. That's detrimental to our walk with Christ. That's detrimental to our, to our spirit, man. Yeah. We need to be thinking on good things. And if somebody is in our lives that is constantly putting bad into us and causing us to think bad things, then we need to step back away from those individuals, whether they are a brother or sister in Christ. Doesn't mean you have to hate them. It means you still love them but you love them from a distance. Yeah, and honestly, chronic unforgiveness produces super rotten fruit of anger, 
depression, yeah. anxiety, fear, and this fruit can turn super sour in the body and cause a multitude of problems. According to Hopkins Medical Group, chronic unforgiveness produces the fight or flight response in the body, which can result in change of blood pressure, immune response, it changes the heart rate, and it can actually increase your risk of diabetes, heart disease, and heart attack. Unforgiveness, left unchecked, grows like a cancer in the body, and all of a sudden it is affecting different aspects of your life, and it can actually affect the good things in your life as well. So the active cognitive process of forgiving significantly lowers your cortisol levels in the body. It allows you to lessen your levels of stress, and it leads to overall improved health in psychological health even it's actually like a medicine for yeah. your body mind and spirit yeah it's so guys not only is it is it just killing our spirit man but it's also like what she was just talking about it's physically harming us and that's why god and christ they call us to forgive don't hold unforgiveness in your heart mm -hmm. it's all throughout the bible forgive 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 because the enemy will feed off of that it will literally hurt you and that's exactly and let's talk about that real quick what hopkins uh, medical institute was talking about how it causes all these things we've realized through deliverances mm -hmm. that unforgiveness allows spirits of infirmity to come and harbor themselves inside of individuals and they won't leave until they find that we find the root of it and guess what the root is 99 percent of the time of these infirmities unforgiveness. it's unforgiveness guys it allows other spirits, that spirit of unforgiveness comes in and it opens you up and then these spirits start flooding you. Next thing you know, you have diabetes and you don't even know why. You're having, all of a sudden you got all these pains and aches and, and, and uh, arthritis. Arthritis is another really big one that we've noticed. Um, and they forgive, we call them out and people are, people are healed from it. It's, it's literally a spirit that is oppressing these individuals and it is all stemmed, it all started through unforgiveness. Yeah, and Satan will try to keep you in a prison of unforgiveness. Absolutely. He will try to keep you bound in shackles. But let me tell you what, Jesus offers the keys to that prison Amen. and he will set you free Amen. in Jesus' name. So we got to start laying it down at the foot of the cross, you guys. <laughs> We're going to go on actually to our next parable, which I feel like is really good. Yeah, this is like our big one here that we really want to talk about uh, as far as forgiving and forgetting. Um, so this one here, this parable that Jesus talks about, it's actually the parable right below, right after Peter asked that question, how often should I forgive my brother? Seven times. And then he tells him 70 times seven. Now we're going to jump into the parable that he backs it up. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. It's a little bit long. It's Matthew 18, uh, verses, uh, 23 through 35 is how long the parable is, but I'm just going to go ahead and read all the way through it. And we're going to break it down. So stick, stick with us guys. It says, therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. And the servant fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and they came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had heard, called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desiredest me. Shouldest not thou also had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth. 
and he delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father also do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. So I want to point that out again. If ye from your hearts forgive. Yes. Okay, so that is a heart issue not a mind issue yep the king remembered the debt but found compassion from his heart and was able to forgive this servant but honestly once he found out that the servant refused to forgive it made him angry and he called upon that debt he remembered yeah so and let's talk about yeah how much is 10,000 talents. Yeah. Okay, guys. So the king in the beginning, now Jesus made this point and it's a very good point. Jesus said that the servant that was forgiven by the king owed 10,000 talents. Now we're thinking, okay, well, yeah, it's like 10,000 bucks, pretty good amount. No, guys, in today's money, I looked it up. That's worth $3.48 billion. Guys, that's like 200,000 lifetimes. Yeah, it wrapped up a bill. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 he did. He racked a big old bill to king. Um, but here's the thing, guys, is that that debt never could have been paid back, mm -hmm. ever. And that's exactly why Jesus used that terminology and said 10,000 talents, because he's saying that what we have done, our sins can never, we can never pay back Christ. We can never pay back the Lord. That's why forgiveness is given to us freely. All we have to do is ask for it. And that's exactly what he did. He said, have patience with me and I will pay thee. He worshiped him saying, have patience with me. I will pay thee back all. And he found compassion upon the man and he forgave him of his debt. But then that same guy went out and snatched up another fellow servant by his throat for a hundred pence. Okay, guys. So I looked up what a hundred pence was in today's time. Guys, that's a dollar 32, a buck 32. After he just got relieved of a $3.48 billion <laughs> debt, he went out and snatched up some guy for a buck 32 give and said, money. give me my money. Guys, it shows you right there. What God has forgiven you of is a substantial amount compared to what you are going to forgive your uh, fellow brother and sister of is minute yeah. compared to what the Lord will forgive of you. And so that's what he was trying to say, guys, is that forgive your brothers and sisters. Yeah. Forgive them of their debts. Forgive them what they did to you because what you guys have done to me and how I've been treated is huge. Yeah, and if you keep calling on someone else's sin, then the king is going to call on your sin exactly. eventually. And, and then it says here that he uh, turned him over to the tormentors until all that debt could be paid back. Well, In this context, the tormentor would be hell. And so we don't want that to happen cast, to us, Yeah, guys. he was cast into hell because of his unforgiveness. Yeah. So guys, when we look at this first servant that was forgiven by the king, he was a follower. He was a follower of Christ. He submitted himself, he asked for forgiveness of his sins, and he was uh, redeemed. So that's really important when we look at this because we can sit here and say, well, you know, um, I might hold on forgiveness, but I'm a child of the king, so I'm going to make heaven my home. This, so is this individual. So is this individual. But because of his unforgiveness towards his other fellow servant, he was given over to the tormentors. Yeah. Guys, forgiveness is so important. It's so important because if we hold on to forgiveness in our hearts, there's a good chance that we won't even make heaven our home. Because it says that in the Bible, like I said earlier in the beginning, that it says that Jesus says that if you don't forgive your brother, then how is my Father in heaven going to forgive you? If there's sin in us and unforgiveness in us, then we can't make heaven our home. And it's not a workspace mentality, but what it is, is that being in, in, in obedience to the word and being obedient to Christ and his commands that he's given for us. Yeah, and I would say one of our greatest spiritual tests is how we handle unforgiveness and forgiving people. In order for us to be completely spiritually engaged, we are going to have to let go of the baggage of unforgiveness. Yeah. Unforgiveness takes a lot of energy and that energy really needs to be going towards spiritual healing and growth in Christ. Unforgiveness, as I said earlier, allows a place for the enemy to live in your life. It gives him an avenue in which he can lie and torment you mm -hmm. and it gives him 
just a way to just keep you in shackles. Forgiveness is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of submission to the Father. Absolutely. It's a sign of spiritual strength and trust in your Lord. And in, by brace, embracing forgiveness, we're able to access the good promises of the Lord. Hope, peace, gratitude, joy, and that's all offered from Jesus by actively practicing forgiveness. And by forgiving when it seems impossible, we're able to truly lean on and trust our Lord and Savior and give him all the glory and honor. Yeah, guys, because forgiveness, like we've talked about and we were talking about, it's, it's definitely a tool from the enemy. Yeah. And it's just going to keep you in shame and keep you in despair and keep you in anger. And so we cannot allow that. That's just, that is one of the biggest tools that we can, that we can give to the enemy. He thrives off of that. He, you know, I always tell people that whenever we do deliverances that, okay, so this next part is we're going to have to forgive some people because spirits will thrive mm -hmm. in an unforgiveness atmosphere. Yeah. They thrive in those situations. Yeah. And we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And we are more than the lies of the enemy. And we are more than the trauma that somebody in this world has afflicted on us. Yeah. You're a child of God. And though... You might not need to be leaning on your own understanding at this point in time. You certainly can lean on the promises of the Lord. He's for you to prosper. He offers you peace beyond all understanding. And we just have to give him the authority to take that pain mm -hmm. and take that unforgiveness towards that individual, even though it might harm us and, you know, like cause us pain. Let him take that pain and that harm. Um, and we can change it into something that was negative to something that's so beautiful in Jesus. And people will be questioning, how in the world did you forgive that person? You can say, only by the grace of the good Lord that I was able to forgive that person. Yeah. And then you can add to your testimony and give Absolutely. God all the glory and honor that he truly deserves for helping you through such a hard time in your life. Yeah, it says in the word to cast your burdens and cares upon me and take my yoke for my yoke is light and easy. And so guys, we aren't even we aren't even designed to even take all yeah. this burden, take all this weight of the world, all this unforgiveness and shame and guilt and anger. We're not even created to harness all of these uh, terrible, awful feelings that we feel on a daily basis. Yeah. That's why Christ said, give me all your burdens. Give them all to me. Everything that you guys struggle with, your daily struggles, give them to me. I'm here to take them and then I will give you my yoke. Because my yoke is light and my yoke is easy compared yeah. to what the world will give you and what you could even literally even put on yourself at times. Yes, but the, we have to give him the authority to yes. change our hearts and to change our minds He's about He's not going to just take it from you. He is a gentleman. He does not yes. push himself on you. You have to be acceptant and open to the idea of even giving it to him. Because a lot of people want to get upset and angry and say, why is the Lord doing this to me? Well, he's not. He's sitting there saying, give it to me. Yeah. Give it to me. And you're clinging on to it. I can't give this or to you. Or you give it to I him won't. and you take it back. Yeah. Times. Or you hand it to him and then you, you know. You're like, oh no, give it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, that's, and then as soon as he starts to take it and starts to take it upon himself, you snatch it out of his hand real quick and say, well, I can't. I, I can't do this. Yeah. We got to lay our burdens, our hurt, our, our shame. We've got to lay it all down at the foot of the cross you guys and allow the Lord to move in our lives if we're going yep. to truly move forward in the Lord if we're going to try to get deliverance we've got to actively practice forgiving other people we've got to forgive so that we can be forgiven absolutely yeah and we've got to lay is, those burdens down at the foot of the yeah cross. you got to give the Lord the authority to change your heart you got to give him that authority he's not gonna just press in and take it you got to give it to him. Yeah. And so guys, with this lesson, I hope it helped. We can forgive people. We don't have to forget. But what we can do is take that memory, take that hurt, take that anger, take that shame, and we can give it to the Lord. And whenever those thoughts start rising up again, you didn't really forgive them. You didn't forgive that person. Yeah, you identify that enemy yeah. and you say, out of my mind, Satan, in the name Liar. of Jesus. You're a lying foe and you're defeated yep. because of the Lord Jesus. Jesus said that. You've yep. been a liar since the beginning. So, out in the name of Jesus. Yep. Get so. out of my mind. So, we love you guys yes. and we hope this uh, spoke to you. 
And we are going to see you guys uh, on Sunday. Yes, oh, no, yes. we'll be, we'll, we'll be uh, later on. Uh, we're doing live communion. So we're going to do that. And so meet us uh, here again at 11 o'clock yeah. for live communion. And 633 prayer. Also, we've been getting lots of questions. Yes, we will be doing deliverance services every Sunday night. There yep. will not be a night that we don't do it. Even if it's Easter, we're doing it because that's where the Lord's leading us. We thank the Lord for Pastor Greg every day and just diving deep into the Bible. And we just thank the Lord for what he's doing in Pastor Greg's life and just allowing the shepherd to lead us into deeper waters with the Lord. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Yes. So we love you guys. Our battery's getting a little bit low, so we're going to have to cut it short. But um, we short. love you guys. We're and, like 45 minutes. Yeah, I know. Guys. Short, yeah. <laughs> so, but we love you guys, and we will see you you uh tonight uh we'll see you at 11 o'clock and then we'll also we will see you tonight for the 633 prayer we hope you guys have a wonderful day and i hope that this uh bible lesson spoke to you guys and maybe kind of changed your mindset on a few things on how we are to forgive that's right and i hope it set you free in jesus yes name. amen love you guys talk to you later Bye bye